Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome from the desk here. And it is time for the last HCA match for this year, actually, because we will not be getting on to this until next year again. Um, this is a this is a bit of a perler. I've already cast for the uh, Sev H team before, and of course, Chimera. So it's Chimera versus Sev H uh, slash 501st. And... Uh, Wow, that's going to be pretty cool. Anyway, let's go across first of all to that right hand side there where we've got Jelly Bear patiently waiting and waving. And hello, Jelly Bear. Good morning. Good to see you. Hello and morning. I'm really excited. You said it was the finals. I was like, yes, let's do it. This is the final match for 2022. Uh, then they have a break of a couple of months and then we get into 2023's remaining matches. Uh, actually, you know what? I have a have a button for this don't i all right there's the major schedule i'm just putting it up on the screen now uh so you can see the next match is well it's listed there as the january the 7th but i don't believe they're coming back till february now um for stuff and things and reasons i guess the team's worked that out us casters just kind of deal with it don't we uh let's yep. pop across here and have a look at the miners now uh and you can see there uh Mira's next match will be against uh, ir i think it is uh which i've cast for previously then Alpha, and then a couple of new teams which I've never cast for. So that's that's pretty interesting. Anyway, how are you, Blue? Lovely to see you. I'm doing good. It was a little cold this morning, but it warmed up, so I'm excited. Excellent, it's excellent. Freezing. And we know, of course, Blue is one of our fellow Hell Let Loose streamers, so she's been gracious enough to put her hand up and come and join me this morning uh, again um, and, and talk about, well, some pretty interesting gameplay. Blue, you were there last weekend for the match where Chimera played who did they play gosh who was uh, last weekend it was Tor and Merc I think uh, Merc and Tor thank you very much yeah now Merc and Tor had only just blended together of course uh recently and um uh yeah that didn't uh didn't go so well for them it was almost a world record uh almost. match time almost four minutes so i hear i'm not yeah. sure on the exact numbers but it was very close to being world record so and and like that that sort of stuff is is of course fascinating what i'm going to do here is i'm going to bring up a point of view screen i've got a few stats from a few different matches here um, we've seen the chimera ones before but just having a look across to my left screen now hang on a minute that's not the one screens here we go look at this left hand side Oh, look at that. All right, so I'm looking at the Chimera stats from the last match there. You can see, uh, well, the, sorry, the server stats from the last match, and you can see um, some of those numbers. And remember, this was a less than 15-minute match. So, um, yeah, she was pretty quick. Hey, Blue, just looking at the uh, game at the moment, we're going to have to swap teams, uh, and you jump on the Axis, I'll jump on the Allies. Um, that across now. Uh, yeah, sorry. So we're just setting up in the game here in the background while we're um, uh, doing this. So still pretty good kill rates. 21 kills for Noct in 14, 15 minutes. <laughs> That's not terrible. That's not bad. I think I do that about uh, an average pub game. I get really excited. <laughs> so if you multiply that by six, which would be the length of a full match, um, 
Uh, you, uh, what side did I just tell you I was putting you on? I'm putting you on the axis side, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's 120 kills for a full mm. match. And we know Nox is pretty good. If we did the, did the maths of it out for a full match. Anyway, uh, of course, that didn't happen. Uh, that This is how it works. What's my favorite stat? Team kills, yes, I'm clumsy. Cannon fogger! Cannon fodder! With the, the team kills, four. Naughty. I need glasses. Team kills, streak, four. Nice. Uh, I love this. Death Streak. Oh, eight Death Streak. Yeah. All right. So that's that's the core Mary Gods for last time. And we've seen some great stats from them, uh, you know, across across time. I've probably got some more in there somewhere. But I just wanted to get across and have a look at um, Feb H501st uh, just to see. And this is going to be a little bit confusing in one of them because it's 501st and 501ES. They're two different teams. Uh, just remember that. But just having a look here and telling me to log in, go away. Um, this is a match from, uh, oh, what was the date on this one? I'm not sure. I'd have to try and work out where that comes from. Uh, so this is where they played IR and we can see some of the, some of the stats here. Let's pull up, uh, kills the other way around. 501st, 191 kills. Holy Jesus. With howitzer. Okay. Artillery, artillery, artillery. <laughs> First three are artillery. Yeah, the bastards. Uh, of course, <laughs> artillery. And what, and what is their death? Like, one all game when Recon finally Deaths, gets to them? Deaths per minute? Uh, well, wait, no. Let's go back to that stat. Death <laughs> 6, 9, 32. Oh, okay. So, it's, Five oh, first obviously had a better run of it there. Uh, just looking at some of the other stats here. I oh, were a bit ahead there. So, not not great kills there from 501... 501st or what was their have a look at this particular game. This was against, um, this was against, oh, this was one that Bergy <laughs> hammered, I think. Um, this is against BST2. <clears throat> I'd have to look up what their name stands for. So, Seb H501 versus B BST2. Uh, we've got a few here in the 80s. That, that's not artillery, so some nice numbers there. They're kind of blended in with the other team, so it's it's either or but it's also hard to tell with some of this because there's names there without um uh any clan tags or anything so and i thought that was supposed to have that as mandatory perhaps not and here's the third and final match that i got received from them um and here we can see they were playing against the 501 es this is the one i said to confuse you now i've already cast 501 es they're not a bad team either so we're getting to a point now, Blue, where I'm, I'm starting to understand a lot of how these teams work and what they do. Uh, but again, you can see it's sort of a mixed bag of people up the top of the table there. 501 ES have got some good players. Jeez. Oh, how it's, there you go. There you go. Same thing again. Okay, it's so it's always the bloody Artie. I, I'm pretty good on Artie and I kind of get a bit bored on it, to be honest. Um, I struggle with the numbers. The I'm getting better at if it's even, I can do it. But yeah. like wiggling it around and stuff oh it, it's so hard there's a few little few little tips i did a video like two years ago on it and i just would like to point out to you i was in the royal australian artillery in the first part of my army career back in the day uh and i was a surveyor so i i kind of have a home home advantage there <laughs> i've been in artillery i know how that shit works You've um got that insider knowledge going on <laughs> a little it is, yeah a little uh, so when I did my video, I actually talked about a little bit of the stuff about how artillery pattern bursts and things work and stuff like that. It's a bit more complex than that. But the way I do artillery, uh, and now there is a 20 meter discrepancy on the ground. So when the round goes down range, it will, uh, it will vary up to 20 meters on the ground. I believe they put in a, uh, a little, uh, random number generation or something into it. So, so that's, that's something to note, but what a lot of people do is they rely on that. And so quite often the rounds will land in exactly the same spot anyway. Uh, cause they're, uh, the random number generator isn't yeah. rude. I wiggle uh, it left and right. One or two clicks left, two or three clicks right. Yeah. You, just kind of around that center point. And I find it seems to disperse it just enough. Yeah. Well, what you do is if you want to hit an area and do a beaten zone with artillery, um, first thing is you lay your three guns into three different bearings, by the way, so that, uh, you, you have guns for different parts of the map. At different times so you can jump from one gun to another that's when you buy yourself as a gun as a gunner yeah but if say so you're on a gun uh, and the bearing is 700 mils uh sorry 700 uh yeah the distance is 700 mils and the bearing is say one two zero right so you fire your first round down at one two zero at 700 
Then you fire the next round down at 119 at 700. Then you fire the next round down at 121 at 700. And then you do the same three bearings, but you add 10 mils and do the same three bearings. And then you take off 10 mils, then take off another 10 mils and do the same three. That's actually a nine, almost like a grid square, nine grid square pattern then on the ground if you want to beat an area to death. If you do that with two guns, there's just, you, nobody runs in there. It, it, you're just going to clear them all out. If you're, you know that um, for forest um, south of West Bend, that would be a fantastic spot to yep. have that because you can't get through that forest. Other than that, you've got to go around through the open fields. That's yep. a great spot for that sort of tactic. i got to go and kick a rabbit's ass in the background here in a minute. There's a, uh, let's <laughs> see if you can see them, the boys. There's one. I don't need, Blue can't see him, of course. Up. Blue can't see him, of course, but uh, I got two Netherland dwarf rabbits that sit in this room with me, and they, whenever I stream, they let me know their uh, annoyance with what I'm doing by starting to rip up cardboard boxes behind me and make scratchy noises. Uh, so, they have things to say. My dogs are currently asleep in the back. <laughs> well, we were talking about that. We were doing your sound checks, and uh, it's like, well, let's test with the dog to see what yeah. that noise sounds like. All right, so I've just got mixed up. And he will let you know about them. <laughs> well, it's just starting to get uh, happening here, so I'm just going to go across to that main screen. Let's have a look here. What have I got? Everyone seems to be filing in. Yeah, it's. Uh, I can't find my bloody main screen. Primary display full. That's what I want, isn't it? There we go. Seems to be a bit of a switch happening. I think people have entered on the wrong side. Uh, so I'm now on the wrong team again, aren't I? Yeah, no, it's um, all right. I was right originally. Uh, I'm going to go across to the Allies if you could pop across to the Axis right now. No worries. Pull the switch. I was on the right side and I screwed that up. <laughs> so, all right. And now we've got to work out which squad. Uh, let's just PM Leipzig and see. Hey, mate. Which squad for my other streamer, please? Let me put uh, voices down to zero. Yeah, you got to turn all that stuff off. All the voice gets zeroed out. The reason is, I guess, uh, so that we don't plus clutter up the uh, stream. Yeah. Uh, but um... spoilers. I don't want to know what's happening. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, there it is. But uh, also there, there is the concept, of course, in any competitive uh, sport or other where uh, someone could cheat. You know, you could be sneaking a little chat in there when we're not watching your screen. Not that, not that we do that sort of stuff, but, uh, uh, you know, you've got to eliminate these risks. Mm. Uh, so they, the HCA has very specific rules. I'm with cannon fodder in the Gat Squad. I'm gonna go and see. I gotta make sure my nameplates are all the way up as well for this. Yes. I always turn them down. I've got them about 10% for when I play, so they're just in the background, so I don't have all these blue dots everywhere. We probably need but, you to check to make sure you've got admin okay. cam too. Yes, I will load in. So while you're doing that, we can have a look at what some of the settings are, just out of curiosity's sake mm. for people. Um, you know, we have everything maxed out here for nameplates and stuff so that they get seen at the maximum distance. It took me a long time to actually work that shit out. Thanks to, I think mm. it was Hubert that told me how that works. So well done, Hubert. Uh, display mode for HUD's always on, and then all the audio gets dropped down. Proxy, unit voice and leadership volume all get turned down to zero so that we don't um, I don't have that. All right, so the match today is being fought on uh, Hirtgen Forest. <coughs> um, that's why you have seen the uh, the beautiful little um, uh, floaty thing going on there, the floaty video going on uh, for those watching on the stream. Uh, Hirtgen Forest. So, Blue, let's talk about Hirtgen Forest. First of all, for streamers, if you go to the top of a hill and the trees are really tall, you don't get to go zoom up too high above them, do you? Because they they actually didn't make the the the, the ceiling infinite, uh, so we get capped out at a certain height. There is a, uh, there is a sky box and it yep. doesn't quite go. You know, on hill five hundred, uh, hill four hundred, sorry, the other hilly foresty map, um, you're just above the trees and yep. hitting the sky box. It's such a pain in the ass to try and cast that stuff and actually see it from a an overall view. Um, but what else can we say about Hirtgen Forest? Well, first of all, there's this giant creek in the middle. Right. And I'm just going to zoom over that now and let everyone have a little bit of a look-see of that. 
that that creek in the middle here we're zooming over right now it's important to understand that there are overwatch opportunities from both sides now i cast that match last night which was a friendly competitive between OC and Poi Boys and uh, TFK and three, uh, not three power, uh, TFK and Emi Warbet, and it was demonstrated how effective you can snipe from nowhere. I watched a 300 meter rocket come from where I'm looking at right now on the screen, uh, which was you know just down. Oh, actually, no, it was over this way, wasn't it? So over here, <clears throat> there was a guy in this trench, I think it was. He shot a rocket over there to the other hill about two or three hundred meters and hit a greyhound in amongst all the trees in here uh which which our viewers will be watching now in the middle of the forest how he could even see through those trees at that distance i have no idea because i can't but you line it up there's someone will ping it and then you need to make sure that your mark is super accurate someone needs to be like eyeballing that thing and then what you do is you just kind of lift it up and you line it up and sometimes on certain um guns you can there's little marks that you can use to just shoot it yeah and we will actually what i'll do is i'll go to the full screen here now uh and we've got blues up in the top right corner there as well which is awesome so just have a look at this full screen now and i saw further uh later over that way somewhere where i'm looking right now um is a uh, there was a uh, lovely type panther sitting up there that shot something through the forest all the way over that side it's incredible so this is why I wanted to talk about this particular channel because you can set up lines of fire from the tops of hills to attack or defend uh, depending on how you want it. And there's a couple of key points. We'll go back over, overlook right there. That's one. Uh, we've got North Pass. Yeah, I mean, that's not that important. It's this area here down south of North Pass that's quite important at Fox 4. Uh, and then down the bottom of the map... Um, it's not called hospice, it's called something else. But uh, down there, that crossing down there is quite important. And then just above that, those two areas there, where you can see Bravo Squad here is at the moment. They're just setting up the map here. Um, so those those areas, and just south of way back as well, where that radar dish is, those areas are important to control at, at any time, no matter which cap point is the centre. So we're, we're literally talking about the start of the match here, of course. Uh, Blue, I'm just getting information. Could you get into Squad de Trompo? That's the squad that. for you, the 501st member squad. Squad the Trompo no Tableau. Uh, so that was a Le Leipzig von Prussian. Leipzig von Prussian is the person I'm speaking to in that thing. Uh, and I hope that I do his name justice. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> what else can we talk about this map? Well, outside of just this centre line here, which is, you know, North Pass there, I think it's um, Scar is in here, and whatever the one starting with H is <laughs> down the bottom. I probably should bring that map up. Um, so outside of those, it, it starts to get a bit challenging uh, to defend because you you don't have that overwatch of what's going on anymore. You've just got a forest. And if we just, what are we going to pick here? Let's go over and look at Vayback Overlook. Uh, let's get in and have a look here. So this area down here on the uh, north side of the hill, favoured for people to be setting up their OPs in the forest there and, and coming up through this bushland here. Uh, or around the back here through these trees because infantry that pop their heads over the hill to look down are going to get sniped from the forest probably around the back here is also a painful area to try and defend just in here in front of me is where you can actually build garrisons and all through this forest here as well uh, just a little bit further forward rather uh, all nasty little area here that we're looking at and you can't see from the point you can't look outwards you you want to defend on top of a hill, but when you defend on top of that hill, you want to actually spread out to the edge of the hill to look down. And and most teams don't do that very well. So that's and and because there's so much cover, that's uh you know part of the problem. All right, we've got the map changing here, blue. So it is time. We are. So I just realised that um, the five first are a South American team. That's correct. So we um, will talk I about. I noticed that that was in the chat, and I'm going. I recognise some of those words. They are. They're absolutely. They're from. A, a number of different countries actually um if i remember rightly we've got uh, argentina we've got paraguay that got corrected by the way i saw that somewhere else um argentina paraguay uh brazil and chile was in there as well fantastic i saw someone say vamos in the chat and i was like oh uh, yes Let's go. <laughs> so we are on, ladies and gentlemen. We are absolutely getting this happening. Where's my squad? 
Come here, squad, where are you? This is the panic moment for a streamer where they're really trying to... The jig squad, there he is. <clears throat> trying to find their uh, squads that can get in, spawn in, and... Uh, uh, hang on a minute, we're on Utah Beach. That's not the map. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, have I got this wrong? Hang on, let me check that. Everything the... we've just said about uh, Hurt Conferus, ignore that. Ignore everything. Unless they're rolling it twice. No, it is Utah. I apologize. I thought they were doing you. Usually they have it the same map as they're going to actually do. And well, really shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about Utah, shall we? What's the uh, what's the important thing about Utah? It's got a Bunnings. It's got a Bunnings. <laughs> All right. You can get off the beach if you're the you playing as the US. You have got to get off the beach. And guess what we're fighting over at the start. Oh no! What is it? Bunnings. Oh wow! Okay, oh, so yes. let's talk about this real quickly. Uh, this entire map has spawned all of the OP, uh, all the captain points at the top of the map. It's the three row for the entire match. Oh, my Goodness. Oh, I've never seen that. I have never actually seen that in over a thousand hours of Hell at Loose playing. I have oh. not seen that before. This is going to be incredible because there's an entire flank up there that is mostly closed down. So it's all south control. Oh, wow. This is really going to open up the, the, the match to be something very different today. Okay, so let's talk about this. First of all, win four is the Bunnings. <coughs> Bunnings because it's got two big buildings there. Also Home Depot for those that understand that. Um, whatever the South American equivalent of that is. So we call it Bunnings in Australia. Google it. It's worth Googling. Uh, but that's where you buy all your tools and shit if you don't go to Mitre 10. So and that's, sizzle. That is that's the and your sausage thing. sizzle. That's right. I'll tell you. So the initial attacks on, on Bunnings here, aka Win 4, are going to be interesting for two perspectives. One is that this side over here, which is the um, the well, let's have a look at that. We've got the allies on the right and the axis on the left. We will bring up the header bar right now. There is all the information up the top of the screen. Axis are going to be the Chimera team, and they got a little logo up the top. Allies are going to be the Seb H5 person, they're going to be the, the uh, little logo up the top right. They're going to be the orange all the time, and Chimera are going to be the blue. So, first of all, Seb H5 first do have a better field to cross across. The downside for them is trying to get quickly up to where Tear Green is. Uh, and get up through that road area. Once they do that, they're home and host. Uh, on the other side here, um, Chimera have got quite open field, and they've also got all those barbed wire, so there's only a couple of approach points. Blue, just quickly talk to me about what their uh, setup is. Let's do the two maps if we can, please. The map two live, let's see that. Up we go. And, of we course, your screen, your screen isn't set because I had to reset everything. So while we're talking here and while we're looking at what's going on there, I'm going to quickly... They do this stupid thing. Here's the guest Discord. Well, we got too. nodes up at um, mid HQ. It looks like they've got two full sets, and they're probably going to get their third set. Um, and they're all kind of booking it straight towards that WN4 or Windows 4, as we lovingly recall it sometimes. Um, they've got one, two, three, three transport trucks, two supply trucks, and they are going very, very far south. All right, just having a look now what Camaro doing. We've got a truckload up there, a truckload up the top there. Uh, supplies, two little vehicles. We've got some early things playing here. Uh, recon way down the south for that Blitzkrieg type play. Uh, we've got the supply truck through the middle there for the early garrison around the center of the screen and that's where you have to control here comes some firepower coming in from everywhere and this is where we start to look at what's exactly happening exactly the same setup they have a recon tank super far south and a support truck they have a garrison they've got their garrison in g5 they've got that uh, middle map garrison and they've got three transport trucks heading to the point they have all hit the point at exactly the same time here more or less big push yes. down the south here from both teams there's shots in there on the point we've got a whole bunch of sim h5 at first right in that bunnings a whole bunch of the chimera folks up the top bunnings as well preloaded artillery is absolutely hitting nothing by the way there goes a vehicle someone's rocketed that from a distance looks like chimera have actually taken the south area early they've got the early kills and they've got the people on the point here and they've got the early kills on the point here this seems to be going chimera's way first of all it's 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 the early pressure uh, was equal across the board there, but if you look up to the north where that really important building is north of win of win four, the uh, H five at first are controlling that, and I have seen that previously on this map, and I've just got to turn the in-game sound down here, blue. We're going to go across to your screen while I do that. Talk to me, what's going on there, please? Well, I'm seeing, like you said, the five of us um, set, uh, team have that. Most of the Chimera players have been taken down. It's a bit of a mess on the point. 
Um, everyone's been taken out, but Chimera has the south, and uh, the Axis, uh, the Axis have the south, and the Allies have the north. It looks like so. This will be very interesting how they well, push to um, point. See, this will be now the point where we get some respawns, we get some spawn waves in. We'll just pop back across to my screen now and have a look what's going on over here. So you can see there that Seb H5 at first have got a little bit of center control trying to get back into the point here as Chimera go to cap it. This will be huge for them because they'll be able to slap down garrison to get some defense on this. If they can push their people up north and clear that out, that's real trouble for Seb H5 at first. Uh, but we, we don't know how this is going to play out at the moment uh, because both teams are pretty good. Both teams are pretty good. There's definitely no Blitzkrieg today from Chimera. They've been stopped cold here with the defensive wave on win four. They have captured the point though, so first first blood to Chimera being able to take the early point. There's a couple of rockets coming in the back of the Lukes that's running through the middle of town. Uh, it's it's in a bit of trouble there if it doesn't uh, <clears throat> get out of there. We've got Loop, I think it is, from Seb H. is going to rocket that in the back end. And there we go. There's the Lukes down. Nice kill there from Loop. But look at Chimera now starting to sweep around the bottom, actually. So they have a little bit of map control down that way, and they're using it to their full advantage, quickly getting some forces forward. We've got a 75, I'm going to assume, here uh, over the back there, shooting towards the Panzer IV. A little bit of a tank off about to happen, Blue, on the point. Let's go across to your screen and have a look and have a talk. Do you see the tanks up the back? We've got a little bit of uh, firepower going through the middle of those uh, screens there. Middle middle of uh, uh, the Bunnings area, don't we? Yeah, they seem to be shooting each other through that. Um, I do see Chimera has gotten super far south, but Chimera first um, SEVH uh, team have got a couple of people down there. Which is good. They seem to be holding them up on the south. What we can do with Seb H5 first, we can call them the uh, South American teams uh, because all of the flags are from South America, so it's just uh, easier and quicker for us because we do get a bit clunky. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we've got Road Rage and Tyson, Road Trooper now sweeping around the south of the map here from Chimera. Now, this is a well known tactic of Chimera, the entice play, where he'll uh, race around there and start setting up some stuff. The trouble is, this time, Compared to previous matches, this area here, I think it's Artillery Battery, I think they call this, or maybe it's Hill, no, it's Hill 5, this one here on the map. Um, this this is usually where you see the next point, and of course you've got to try and come in from all the different angles. Um, for the 501st, for the South American team, all they need to do is control this area more or less. Uh, if they have a good defensive line here, um, some, uh, you know, garrisons, whatever, and troops that can spawn back, They'll be able to shut down any south push because there's a lot of open territory here that I'm looking at now towards the <coughs> towards the next point. Uh, oh yeah. You should, you think that having all the um, points in a row would be really bad because you can just kind of steamroll through. But I have a feeling it may work to the defense's advantage because they have to come through you for most of it, and you can kind of encircle it, and they can't come from the north. Some really fascinating front line stuff going on at the moment here. Uh, Chimera do hold the Bunnings, but only just. There, there's some good kills going on there from artillery. That, if they keep that pre-positioned artillery on the, uh, what is effectively the east side of Wind Four, that's going to suppress any uh, any South American push that's coming across there. Uh, but they are working pretty hard for it at the moment, Chimera. You can see how many people have to actually be spawned in on that point to defend a a determined South American push here, and they do control that north set of buildings, and they're using that to excellent advantage we can get down here into the obvious garrison spot which is always where you see a garrison and that is right down up the north there of that building because the reason is for those that don't watch this too often you can see how low the ground is out here so you can't see that garrison until you're right on top of it it's right on map edge uh clear su uh, suggestion for a bombing run there at some stage for the chimera team uh, <clears throat> The uh, behind that little um, hill bump, which is a good spot oh. to have it because you have to get close. You can't really rock it over the top. You run the risk of hitting that little hill. Yeah, I'm going to pop to your screen again, Blue, uh, because I did that friendly last night. I've, I've not changed the fucking title. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. I'm just currently sitting up in the north. Um, we're watching the South American team hold that building, which is a really good spot. Usually people put their garrison in the courtyard of that building, but having it slightly further away means that Chimera have to come through them 
um, and their hold on that building. But Chimera don't seem to be able to get into that north bit, but they do seem to have a presence in the south, and they are starting to come uh, from behind the South American team. They've gotten around them in the south, so they, there's a bit of a worry as they come through the fields there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now I've, I've changed the title. Apologies to chat. Thank you for the person that picked it up. Uh, so that was last night's stream that I did, and uh, I just just forgot that I changed it at all. Usually I just have it set to HCA a couple of days before. And, uh, Blue can, uh, is a testimony to what I had to do with my computer yesterday. It was literally in pieces with every cable unplugged and pulled out and everything pulled apart yesterday as we uh, as I tried to remedy the damn thing. So there was a nice photo of that just before I pulled it all apart. Uh, here we go though. Operation yesterday. It was a, it was a it was a major operation yesterday. Yeah. So Chimera holding the point. We are ten minutes into this battle, Blue. Ooh, and they haven't left the the midpoint. I'm excited for this. This is this is a big match so far already. Let's just do a little Artillery bit of sweepy across point. here. Just and the bombing run now from from South Americans. They're putting one right over the front of the Bunnings there, trying to clean it up while their troops force to push in. Yeah, it is absolutely. This is an attacking bombing run now. They're going to try and push across there. They had a squad leader just rip across there before. He probably had a look and say, hey, it's a bit thin out the front here from the Chimera team. Let's get it on. There's a tank still over the back here somewhere. I can hear it shooting. Where the hell is that? Where is that Ooh, tank? Is there it is. That? It's oh, that's a nice spot for a tank. I think that might be the Panzer IV still, is it, or is it a Panther? That's a Panther. So this Panther, in a very, very good shot, it has just blown something up over the back there. It is putting suppressive fire through the buildings and, and stopping any attack up into that north building, which is the center of Wind Four. That's a great spot for the Panther. Of course, it can also look around everywhere, and it's got good infantry support uh, options from back here. Um, so yeah, look at that. That is that is great play. And the Chimera now, even though that bombing run came through, they've thrown a few more bodies back at the point yet again, and they've really slaughtered the attack from the South Americans here. There's a lot of pressure on them uh, to try and get into the point. And the artillery from Chimera is now hammering that north building, which is slowing down the attack as well. The garrison's still up there. I think, though, what's occurring is that the South Americans might be getting hammered down south a bit, Blue. Um, I'm just watching something just died down there, and there's quite a few Chimera moving around that way. Just going to there's zoom across there. There's a whole squad down here, um, down south. There's only a few South American teams, but they are coming in from that Hill 5 area. I don't know. Let's have a look. They have a garrison just behind it, so they will be using that to cover and try and hold that south bit. They then have a garrison in the H4, um, where that that little cluster of buildings is. So they have some garrisons at like each point and they should be able to have a couple of spawn waves off to deal with any attacks from Chimera. Yeah, absolutely. Now um, I'm gonna, while we're looking at your screen here, uh, I'm gonna actually do a little bit of uh, uh, rectification in the background here because uh, what what's happening is the uh, two map mode thing for me is just not working, unfortunately. Um, I wanna be able to bring those two maps up onto the screen in front of everybody. So. Uh, we're just going to get Blue looking around a bit and talking about what's going on there. Blue, I just did notice that the point started to blink briefly. That was a Puma that died down south before, by the way, not a uh, not an allied tank. Uh, but I just noticed that uh, AA battery was blinking briefly. And uh, looking at it from a panoramic view from my perspective at the moment, um, you can see that there's quite a big wave of all-round attack going on there. There's the big spawn wave, though, from the South Americans up north where that garrison is as the Chimera guys try to push onto it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but pushing into the north. I think they're trying to get that garrison. If they can get that garrison, they then have the north section. But they are still trying to push from the south, uh, from the Hill 5 area. Um, and there's a few of them getting quite close to AA battery as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, Blue, I'm going to get you to just uh, chat to the Panthers out there and talk about what's going on there while I get this double screen thing fixed. Um, yeah, because it's causing me a little bit of trouble. Yeah, that's all right. We do have a Chimera push from the south of Battery. Um, they seem to be getting in to the Hill 5 area. We do have a tank currently south uh, going for their garrison in the H4 area. I think they just took it out unless the garrison is in the building. Right. Let's double check. No, it's still live, but the, the I think there's an AT who may be getting behind the tank. Is he going to take the shot? 
He's got one shot Ooh, on it. The tech yeah. is currently backing up the wrong way. Do keep doing a spin. Do a donut. It's the, it's the best way to protect yourself. He may Ooh. be able to get it if he gets a second shot. I think he's going to capture this, but we've got a little bit of a... Well, has he got another rocket? Garrison. Doesn't look like he's got another he rocket. Oh, he may not have another rocket, which means the tank is going to make its escape. It, I think it'll push north, go super far, and then may um, try and repair, unless it'll just run off. Yeah, it's going to kill a few there. Blue, let's just go to your map quickly. I want to try and get this two-map thing fixed for everybody at home. Yeah, it didn't and... get the garrison, though. It was super close to it, but I think that AT um, kind of pushed it away. All right, this is on-the-fly editing, of course, uh, which is always just terrible. Uh, and and uh, there's not much. Oh God, here we go. Uh, not much I can do about this. Unfortunately, I've had so much trouble in the last few days uh, with this stupid computer. Keep that map up, please, Blue. Uh, there we go. We do have a massive spawn wave on that garrison, and I just saw someone sneak in, but I don't think they're going to get it. There's um, about ooh, three officers and about ten people spawned on that, so I have a feeling that H4 garrison will stay safe. Yeah. And they'll be pushing in and trying to protect that south. Right, there we go. So uh, here is, uh, it's not working at all. We will uh, we will just get rid of it for this um, uh, particular match. We're not going to be able to play with that today. So we'll whip across the Blues map when we need to. Back to the main game here, folks. Um, technical problems in the last few days. It just hasn't quite been quite ironed out, unfortunately. So, all right. <clears throat> so let's talk about what's going on right now as we get into this match and get things moving along quite nicely here. Oh, no, they're going for that garrison up north. Is there going to be a spawn wave? Oh, it, no, it's locked down. I don't think they can spawn. So Chimera has taken that garrison right on the map edge. Yeah, now just I saw that go down in front of us there. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Push in um, from the south, but the South American team is currently trying to head across the field along the map edge. They'll probably use those hedges and then try and get back into that north building. But Chimera now have pretty much uh, complete control over that sector, and they've got a tank rolling in as well. Absolutely. All right. While we're just watching this play here, I'm just going to stay up the back bit. Let's talk about uh, uh, Lixig von Prussian. Um, Seb H is his particular team, and it's it's Sud. Uh, what does the acronym stand for? Gosh, I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, but they, uh, he, his team, and the 501st play on the HPL with a full Seb H team. Uh, 501st was part of Tango. And um, they started together as uh, ACA, uh, ASA rather. <clears throat> we'll talk about 501st first shortly. Uh, for Seb H, uh, Leipzig von Prochen is the guy that does all the strategies and tactics, um, coordinates the work. And group leaders are Martin, Skyline, King Domandu. Uh, tank commanders are Pardel and Leipzig. And there's a few other squad leaders in there as well. Uh, good shooters we need to look out for while we're watching here. Renam, Moscafal, Rodrigo, Martins, Napalm, and Granadero. Granadero. Um, tanking is their strong point, is what they're telling me. Uh, there's a lot of time and dedication placed into the tankers. Uh, they like being flexible and agile, and they are showing that a little bit here, Blue, I must admit. They um, are responding to things well. The Chimera are quite a brutal team. Here's a 76 coming into the point, by the way. Um, uh, quite a brutal team and have been doing very well. They are the second top team in the competition, having unfortunately for them lost to, uh, uh, who was it at the start, Alpha? No, not Alpha, they lost to Sesh right at the very start. Uh, but then they've won every match reasonably convincingly since. So quite a tough team to fight against and uh, South Americans are holding their own here quite quite well. Um, <clears throat> they are- uh, Chimera Spawn Wave, I think as an OP, they're on tier green at the moment. They're probably going to take out all the back garries. They're oh, the full spawn nice. wave. I'm just watching them. They're going, pro like, yeah, they're probably going to all the garries. I don't mind where it is. Yep, they've locked it out and they've taken it out. So they're currently hunting down all their back garries, and I have a feeling we're about to see a push on AA battery. Yeah, nice pick up there. To roll through it. Nice pick up there, Blue. I was wondering where those south forces would end up. Well, this is it. Remember, we talked about it in tights. Uh, literally about 10 minutes ago. So it's taken him 10 minutes to get his squad up here uh, and OP off, and that's where he is now. And here you can see uh, the South Americans are now responding, sending out a squad leader to see, probably expecting it's only one or two, but that's a whole squad out here at the back. Plus we've got Butter Dog squad down to the south there, fighting with uh, the uh, South Americans trying to control that point down here. And there is a tank in there, it's a Stuart shelling uh, Mav squad. 
Now, just finishing off talking about the uh, Seb H folks. Um, they they look. They just want to improve and go show a good season. Um, there's a few people with military experience, and uh, they all they seem like a pretty good bunch of, uh, of folks. Um, and I've enjoyed the, the match I cast for them previously, so we'll uh, we'll hopefully enjoy this one just as much. Really good push though around the back here, Blue, uh, from the Chimera guys. Coming in quite nicely here in Tyson's squad, and the pressure's on now. Lanzarote's actually swept around. He's been shot there up to north. Uh, he'd be, hopefully, for the South Americans, screaming, hey, we're in trouble here, because uh, panic, <laughs> panic, panic is on the point. There should be panic on the point right now. Um, absolutely. I think they'll be starting to spawn at HQ and um, try and clear them out from that north bit. There's only three of them and their officer is down. So if the OP goes, they'll have to start that whole thing again. But they are still behind um, AA Battery and they're currently pushing in. Uh, the South American team is now mostly south of AA Battery and Chimera seems to be coming in from the north. Get you in nice and tight there on AA Battery if we can, Blue. And we'll watch that in that top right screen there. While we're looking at this really, really good push, well played by Chimera here, and Tice has done all the legwork. He must get his Apple Watch miles up on that uh, little set of legs of his because he's right round now. He's running all the way around the map, probably about 10 grid squares worth of running. And here he is in the point now, and, and the South Americans just got a really good spawn wave. We can see just in the bottom left of my screen, that's where their garrison is. Watching blue screen in that top right corner there, the, the murder is about to commence on the point, so we want to see that as well. You can see what's happening over the back there. Uh, Win 4 is now quite, quite held, um, quite held by the uh, uh, Primera team. They don't have to worry too much about that, although there is a nice little push to the south there uh, from towards the chapel way there in the top of screen, the 12 o'clock position on screen. But Primera do have some really good uh, push happening here on AA battery there. There's a Luke somewhere down there shooting. I can hear it. Um, there's a spawn around the back here where Entice has got his OP right in the point. And, uh, oh, geez, I tell you, this, this could go either way here right now. There's there's enough. There'll be another spawn off this garrison down below. But Burrito's right on that garrison. If he takes this garrison now, that's that's a garrison lock now. He's killed Lux. He's going to take the garrison down. Chimera are going to be able to crack this point open now because the spawn for uh, 7 h 5 are not going to be able to spawn on the point now. They're going to have to spawn way south. Garrison's down. What a brilliant play here from the Comera team. They've actually cracked this point right open now. We're going to see it start the cap, and there it goes. Blue, the point started the cap now. South Americans in absolute down. trouble. I they're going to have to book it north from that garrison, which is just below. That's the only garrison that they have, the one in G4. They're going to, they're dropping supplies on Tear Green. My bet is that they'll probably try and get the Hill 5 garrison back up. But Bring up your map again, please, Blue. Push north, they should be able to hold it because they will have just the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. We're looking at uh, there's an airhead coming in from Gomera as well now. They control the point well enough. They've thrown an airhead in. That's a great play from the commander of the Gomera team, which of course is VK today. Uh, he's got enticed, although there's the there's the commander of the uh H five first. Who is that? A Brazil a Brazil something up. Can't see the full name. Uh, a Brazilian is his name. <laughs> a Brazilian. There you go. Uh, so a Brazilian actor. I remember him from the other week. Chimera have got to defend that airhead. If they defend that airhead, they'll be able to get a full team spawn in on here. But look at the surge coming in now from the South Americans. Very good response here. There's the commander. He's, he's put down a garrison right there up near that uh, airhead. He's now trying to get to it. Airhead. I have a feeling uh, the commander's going to get the airhead. It's covered in smoke, so I don't know if Chimera would be able to see him. Um, yeah, he's locked it out for sure. There's no bombing run with the airhead, which is what usually happens. Oh, sometimes you don't see it as much in comp uh, as you might think, because um, I saw a very good play last night, actually, where the bombing run was put about 100 metres in front of the airhead, across in front of it. What it actually did was it blocked that line of sight for the airhead falling. So the players that were running towards the point, they couldn't see the air because of all that damn smoke and, and dirt and, you know, body parts flying up in the air. Oh. Huge spore wave! Holy Jesus, there it is. The commander there, a Brazilian, has absolutely thrown down here. A great play, although they're getting shredded as they come off of that. There's a tank coming around behind us. I'm just going to check what that is. It is a 75 by the look of that. So, while Comera have got the pressure on the point here, they still are capping uh, the... 
The South Americans are fighting back, fighting back hard. They are getting the spawns up here now. You can see another spawn wave down south, but that spawn point is that a bro, oh, it's just been rocketed by Melko. I got to check that. If that garrison is down, there's another play. That is a brilliant play. Oh, he's missed it. And he got it though. Oh, he missed it with his first shot. He got it with his second. God, this is anybody's right now. This is amazing stuff. They're going to have to get a couple of garrisons. They're going to be looking at straight to Tigre and get a garrison up. They'll block garrisons all down their HI line. They may get one back up in uh, H4, but just pop it backwards slightly. The Chimera team, if you have a look at my screen right now, um, you can see there that it's circled around blue. If you can type in chat, yes, we realised after the map flip that the actual map wasn't <laughs> and it was Utah. Fail. Fail on our part. Um, all right, there's the big spawn wave again from the uh, South Americans. We uh, we are looking in here at what's going on. Uh, that they, they are going. Oh, bombing run now! This is a bomb. It's a huge bombing run straight across the point from VK. Oh no, that's not. That's actually a seven eight five at first. They bombed their own point to try and clear out some uh, Chimera team, but th there's nobody in there at the moment. They're all just sector capping it. Oh behind there's nobody in the point there. i don't think there's any chimera up oh, but a dog there is a team behind it jinx is behind it but is going for the garrison and he's missed his first shot and there was a spawn wave although oh, that spawn wow. wave has been completely taken out by a random market this is there's the rocket onto another garrison he's taken out this is the point will now turn ladies and gentlemen primera have got the cap weight and they're taking out the two clutch garrisons that were holding the point together for the south americans but unfortunately for them both garrisons now down and uh they've got nothing to spawn in off except for ops and that's not going to be good enough here so chimera with a relentless push from almost 360 degrees then um got in behind them which put enough pressure on them having to pull back i think I, they didn't have enough people on the south well, taken out on the north and then chimera were able to take that north bit from them well they didn't respond to that attack they sent one squad leader out to the five blue the five chimera forces that were at tear green uh they responded with one squad leader who of course got shredded as soon as he came around the edge of a bush and and that shut down that entire eastern side for the south americans there's the point ladies and gents it has now turned across into chimera's favor it's 4-1 in their favor right now and they are on a roll here ladies and gentlemen chimera are on a roll tear green is an absolute bastard of a point to try and defend once you're on the beach on utah or omaha you are in real serious trouble so i am keen to see all of this chat that we've just had about how 785 at first can uh, are trying to uh, demonstrate their wares. This is your chance, Sev H501. First, you can bring this back here. There's an hour to go, Blue. There's a whole hour to go in this match. There is. It has been what half an hour, twenty minutes already, and fantastic. This has been great. I was, uh, I was really surprised that neither um, team has rolled through. They've actually had um, to fight their way through. Kind of Let's get you nice and tight there where that tank is at the front and uh, Roxo and Short Ass and Dazbira are moving in if we can, please. Oh, big kill! We were just talking about. That is a super good spot right on top of that bunker. You can overlook everything, but you are so exposed and they've just been completely well, taken out by a long shot as well. You know what that tank's doing up there, right? It's sniping the artillery of the Chimera team. That's true, because you can make those shots from across the map. I have heard, I have heard tale of these secret shots. But yep. that is the spot where they go, that is good to know. <laughs> that is absolutely, I was filming it one day and I was looking at the artillery on the Chimera team and tank rounds were sailing past. I was like, where the hell are these coming from? I was, I kept my cool as a commentator and I went, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> That was fantastic. I know that as the German side, you can make a 900 meter shot, um, and the Americans 700, only because the rockets tend to um, phase out of existence after 700. So you can make a long shot as an AT onto their artillery if you're close enough. This here, I'm just going to show everybody right now. This is a match that I did a couple of weeks ago. There was a player standing behind that wall right there. And he was shooting the artillery with rockets. What he would do is shoot two, because you get two. Ooh. Then he would reload from an ammo box that was next to him, shoot another two, and then he would respawn and rinse and repeat. 
and they were actually look at the range of these rockets how that far they had to go and he was accurate as hell so well well done for those types of things being worked out great shooting i can take is in a bit of trouble on the point they've got two of the crewmen out and repairing it's taken about four or five shots and it hasn't died which is really really lucky but they yeah. are um, coming in. If the if an AT misses their first shot, they might get their second. But then there are the rockets that have to go resupply, which sometimes gives you a little bit of breathing room as um, a tanker. All right. So uh, apologies to chat there. As I said, it's um the uh, the stream name was incorrect from last night's match. I normally don't even think about that because I usually have it set. So it's fixed. We got fixed earlier, but. Uh, it might be false advertising for some people. Let's let's have a bit of a summary wrap at the moment. What's going on? So, oh, that was a great oh, rocket there. AT gun. I was just about to mention that they've got an AT gun up the north, but it looks like Jonah Tank has taken that out. I think there's they a tank up there as well. By the look of that, let's have a look at the maps here, Blue. I'm going to check mine out first. We can see there's a, a Panther up the top there. That was shooting up there. There's another Panther, I would guess, down the south by the look of that over there to the left. He's going to sweep around in on the beach attack now. And the beach is in a bit of trouble here. We'll whip across the blue screen now and have a look at what the uh, the um, uh, map says there. You can see on her side there's... Well, with the garrison blue, we've got one, is there? The is right behind Tear Green up the north. Then you've got the next one down in I-4 behind a bunker. Um, and then that's about it. They don't have any other garrisons up. It would be good to get a third or fourth uh, just down the... Just well, they'll be struggling with that because Chimera have been dominating that artillery area there, which is, of course, this India 5-6 part of the map. At, at this point in time, when you know you, you're struggling to get anything happening there, um, you've, you've got to press firm south and try and clear. And they're just doing that now. You can see there's a good spawn wave come in. This is tough, though. I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Uh, the South Americans are absolutely on the back foot against any team on the beach, let alone a quality team like Chimera. They're still trying to put artillery down range. At this point, artillery probably is a little bit of a waste because uh, of the, the suppression from the Chimera players. So you've got to get your squad forming up and pressing out and trying to press a hole somewhere so you can get a back garrison in. Until you can get flanking work happening, you're, you are on the defense and you are going to get pounded into a corner and that's what's happening chimera had just gradually pounding them into the corner here you can see uh some you know that that probably three or four minutes ago this area here where this giant blue wave is was actually orange held but now it's all blue and this is huge problem for the uh a massive chimera push coming in from the north they've yep. got a garrison up right behind that hedge with it um follow them in blue if you can follow them right in and their tank is coming in through with the engineer. Mugshot's just riding on the back of that. He's probably got his repair kit out, just constantly repairing that tank. But That's... they now have a, hu a second spawn wave off the north. I think they've got this north bit locked down, and they've got a tank. That's something that they do, and they do well, uh, Chimera, is they support their tanks now. Um, there was a hard, few hard lessons learned, I think, through... It's starting to blink. There we go. We got a little bit of blink on the point, and that's that north push now, and also a little bit of southwest here. Uh, and again... Step H5 at first, just in real trouble here on the point itself. They've got they've got some numbers here, and they are holding their own sort of, but they've been pushed right back away from their outer layers. So <laughs> when I talk about the layers, of course, and I mention this each time, so the point itself is actually back here. So this row of hedgerow I'm looking at in the middle of the screen, that's one layer. If you've got enemy on that layer, then you've got no fallback. Your OPs are literally on the point uh, where you're defending. Uh, and that's a problem for them right now because they can't push back out. Uh, and they've got a tank there. North, they seem to just be, they just spawn on it and run across the hedge. I think the road, just across the hedge on the road, they become, um, they get interceptor. So they can proxy cap just by having a huge spawn wave and a couple of them getting across the road. We're going to keep you up there on the north blue if we can please uh just to watch what's going on a oh, disaster down the south here a truck a transport truck's been caught on a supply box uh, oh dear you know you don't want to see that sort of stuff they've got a garrison down here i'm just doing a bit of a yeah i can hear that that is that is coming bombing run across the point this is going to pop it open now i think it's going to be ggs we'll see what happens there did it pick up the garrison there they go oh we got the garrison no garrison is still up on tear green but there is a huge number of them. They're just swarming across that road. Um, and they're going straight for that garrison. 
Looking down yeah, south here. Looking down oh, south here, I've got three people on artillery for for the South Americans. Again, I still don't I don't think I'd be doing that. That's my opinion. I, I may be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong on that. Um we got we, we had a bit of a push down here. I saw some people, but they've gone. Uh this was where you, you crack it open. Get back in control of the Vox see one squad leader by themselves against all of that chimera that's running around down here. That's never gonna wash. And and they're not they're not doing enough anywhere. They're they're doing some in various places. Great kill there. I think that's an anti-tank kill on the hill. Who's who was that? Oh no, that's an overwatching 76 that just got threaded up on top of the hill there. That's uh, unfortunate for them. You you you're against very good tankers here uh, that are that are well back and sniping. Uh, they've learned a lot of lessons. Oh, the coming up behind. I think they're going to try and have a go at. Um getting the tank up here. Does he have a satchel or he's got rockets? He's got rockets, but there is a He's missed! Oh, he missed! Oh, oh, that was such a quick shot. I bet he saw, saw that entire spawn wave to his right and went, just take a shot, and he missed. But oh. it has the tank. And the tank hasn't been able to get that garrison either, which means I think they should be able to keep getting some spawn waves off. We have another AT coming round as well. He's going super far north along that wall. And I have a feeling he's going to try for the tank. Right, absolutely. Big spawn wave here. So they are holding, they're holding enough because Chimera can't quite push enough in. They just have to get the garrison spawn. If they get the garrison spawn, it's all over. So that's, it's again, we're back down to this one clutch garrison right now on the point up north here where Chimera just got to keep trying to push, keep trying to push. And that Panther is going to be the difference for them because the, um, the South Americans aren't able to get uh, tanks on the beach. Now, no, because they've got enough infantry, Chimera have enough infantry up the top. They keep having a small wave just coming in from behind that tank, which means they're stopping this other team from pushing up. Combined arms, tank. Blue. Combined arms every single time. Run infantry with tanks, and you can just keep grinding for it. They, of course, have learnt the art of two tanking, and you can see there in screen for me. Here's a precision strike. Oh, the commander's tried to put one on that tank, and he's missed. There are two Chimera and then there's one just behind, it's moving forward, yep. it's still behind that hedge there. So they've got them there, which means they can cover each other. And, and that's that's the art of the two tanks. And a, run an officer and an engineer and just follow a tank around, because they can drop OPs and the engineer can just ride on the back of that tank and just repair it as it goes. Yep. Ooh. Yep, I can see him. He's got one in the back. It's Luke's got around there again. They know that tank's up there. You can see the forces trying to jump. And Look, it's very hard here at the moment for um, the South Americans to deal with these tanks. The two Panthers combined with the infantry are pretty brutal, although they are starting to shred a bit more. They've pulled everybody back now. They've run out of garrisons. The ATs just running up to that tank. They're going to be trying to get any shot on it they can. Yeah, this is brutal for the South Americans, though, because uh, it's, it's you know, it's two tanks right there. I think All Straws is going to get a satchel on that. All Straws is going to be able to get a satchel on that Panther. There he is right now, putting a satchel on the ground in front of it. Uh, Blue, if we can get your camera right in amongst that action, please. I'm going to stay up in that panoramic. And we'll just see what's happening there. There's another one going. Oh, in Fredsno. Oh, in, in, it's just too close to the front. It's an absolute mess up here. I'm just, everyone, they're just throwing AT at this tank. They're probably going to get any... Oh, oh there it goes. Nice, well done. I'm a Zadino. I got his name right eventually. Uh, I think that other tank had a satchel next to it on the ground there, but it's going to run away quickly enough. Watch this satchel go off. It, if it picks up that tank, it'll be lucky because it's reversed hard because it's lost all its infantry. Oh, rocket in from Pardal. So good, good counterplay here from the South Americans. They have managed to kill one Panther and push the other back, and they'll be able to retake some of that ground. Uh, this is like World War One, isn't it, where you're just fighting over a few meters of ground right now. Uh, yeah. So they push back enough. But Chimera still have the huge spawn wave coming in there out to the right. There's an airhead dropping in. Whose airhead is that? Oh, that's a Chimera airhead. It's not ours. It's a Chimera airhead. It's dropped in. VK's defending that. And they will have a hard time getting to it. So that, oh, it's a rocket bow. Luke's seen it. They know it's there. Grenades over the top oh, there. have got to be able to kill that airhead. Skyline's racing in. VK's trying to defend it. I don't know if he's going to be able to. We'll whip around the back there and have a look. I'm going to get in, but right in behind him. It's just behind the wall and a couple of boxes, so the rockets are 
like if there weren't the walls, the rock would probably a proxy get it. Oh, Skyland, I have a feeling he's gonna get that airhead. He's got to it. Yeah, he's gotten that airhead, but that is such a good spot because you don't necessarily want to put it behind the forces, otherwise it'll just be exposed on the beach. But it acts as a second garrison. What did it? What? We got that Gary. Too. What else did it do though, Blue? It took away a whole bunch of forces to try and deal with one airhead. And look oh, yeah. what Chimera managed to do. They have gotten around. They are shredding everyone on the garrison. Oh, this is it. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. Chimera should be able to crack this garrison now. Gee, they're close. think they've got the numbers maybe they can get a spawn wave off but we will get a spawn wave off on that because chimera can't get close enough to it they've got a few people on it this is this is the one though if they can if they can crack this it's game over uh south americans need to hold this garrison with everything they've got he's throwing a few smokes in there now to try and protect it you can see el sid now trying desperately to say there's the spawn wave oh look at that and then the shredding i mean short asses came around the back of him he's still alive this oh, is, this is still the close, El Cid's holding. They don't have the numbers, there's only one or two of them. Oh, holy, they've, they've protected the area, although short us is... El oh, Cid's that's area. a rocket from God knows what's going on there. Why is he shooting a rocket in? There's no one there anymore. El Cid's defending it. This is an absolute Medal of Honor roll here. Victoria Cross, <laughs> eat your heart out. El Cid, look at him go. Shut up. He is saving it. Spot. I don't think they can see. You can't see him over that wall, but there's enough smoke that he's being able to shred the wall. I just completely held that garrison. I thought that garrison for sure was going to go down in that push. Well, they've, they've, they're still on. I'm going to keep your camera right on that spot, Blue. Do not leave that at all. I am watching it like a hawk. <laughs> we oh, oh, what? What? As we say, <laughs> Jonah take us, put a rocket straight into that garrison, and he is down. That... That's and the end. No supplies. They can't get that garrison. There was a couple oh, of Oh, <laughs> Holy hell! They took out a lot of the Chimera players as well. The garrison's gone though, which means now the point is about to start blinking because Chimera's gonna get another huge spawn wave off up north here, I reckon. Oh could I be stressed anymore? I've just bumped my camera. It is exciting. That garrison stayed up way longer than I thought it would, for sure. Absolutely. And we just, um, I thought we had your volume set right, Blue, but unfortunately it's not been right. Apparently it's not. Oh, no, I'll talk that. <laughs> no, it's all right. We've fixed that. Just put up another 15% there. Hopefully that's good enough. Uh, oh, dear, this is just amazing stuff going on right now. What a fight. This fight, this fight is one of the best fights I've seen in this entire competition. What an absolute... The 47 minute mark. Like, by this time, I think we've been through two um, of the previous games. Not even halfway, ladies and gentlemen. We've got 47 minutes to go. It can be won. It can be won by uh, the South Americans from here. It really can. There's a tank down on the beach. Or an anti-tank gun. Um, oh, they're dropping supplies, which means they're going to get that garrison back up, which would be good. Um, I think what they need to do is get someone super far south. Oh, I see a little green dot. That would be my uh, squad lead over there. Super far south behind Ooh. the um, Chimera players as well. All right, that's so the stuff. There, there is this point where you, you squad leaders should not be in there fighting right now. Let's check your map out, Blue, if we can, please. First of all, we'll have a look at mine. We'll have a quick look at what's going on here. You can see the intel, uh, what's going on there. And... Um, yeah, that's that's important for us to understand how the match is actually playing out up the north there. But let's have a look at what's going on around the back here as well. Comera aren't very deep. They don't have anything down here anymore, really. Uh, and that's given an opportunity for the Sev H501 to start to push through that area. We're being across the Blues map now, and we'll have a bit of a look-see and see what that says. Just zoom out a bit for us first, Blue, and see what we've got down south. So there's absolutely what? Oh, look at all those garrisons. There's a bunch of garrisons, which is fantastic. Uh, it looks like my squad lead is going to get a garrison up in I-5, which will be a southern garrison for the point. And they've just got the garrison back up on Tear Green. So I have a feeling they may be able to pull it back. And they've got a gar the garrison in G5 and uh, G6 as well. They'll be able to attack um, AA battery and put some, um, get some pressure off Tear Green from that. 
All right. So the, the attack's still going on here on the point. I think um, at this stage it's starting to blink. I think I think we're back into a little bit of trouble zone for um, yeah, for the uh, CH5 person. There's their spawn coming in now, and Jonah's about to kill that, I reckon. He's just sweeping around. Um, we're back on my main screen now, Blue. Garrison on uh, Tear Green, he's taking that down. And there goes the Garrison on this Tear bombing Green. bombing run from Chimera. This is a Chimera bombing run now, straight across the point. Oh, he's going to kill a whole bunch of his own. Yeah. I'm oh. very happy about that. I don't know if he knows that the Garrison just went down as well, because that would have taken the Garrison down, for sure. Oh, if he just waited five or ten seconds, he could have run it up that brick wall and taken out OPs and stuff there. Chimera have got this now though, Blue. This is this is the end, unfortunately, for Sev H5 at first. We can see that something just blew up down on the beach. So, uh, you know, there's a steward there trying to defend the point. But Chimera now have swarmed to the top of the hill. If I get down to beach level, you can see what's happening there. Chimera have swarmed to the top of the hill here, and they are absolutely setting up attacking positions for the beach. They're all over the point, and they've got their tank rolling yep. in. So uh, there's just no spawn points, unfortunately. But this is, uh, yeah, that's the end of the game, unfortunately, for the South Americans. They survived a lot, that, especially that one on the beach. That survived way longer than I thought it would. It took, to get several spawn waves off. It took a little bit too long for uh, the South Americans to get that southern flank working. Uh, and you can see they're just starting to come in now towards uh, the point and, and, you know, put pressure on the back line of Comer, but it's too late. It's too late. This should have happened 10, 15 minutes ago. Um, yeah. you know, ignore the cap. One or two squad leads just by themselves, plopping OPs down and then moving forward. And then when they get to a spot, then you, um, I guess it's called cloud powering or OP flopping, then you get someone to come in as support and drop a box. Yep, so the, the, the you know, 10, 20 minutes ago is when we wanted to see um, the Sev H501st send two or three squad leaders. That's a little pack, perhaps around the back um mm. and uh i'll give the point my point to milk uh because i enjoyed him rocketing a garrison from distance um so just having a quick look at the two teams now on the screen here for everybody and we'll get rid of that header bar so it's not frustrating us uh some of the squads particularly on the sev h5 our first side a brazilian of course is the leader there let's whip down to about halfway oh we've got to wait for this to do it <laughs> this is the way i level up to by the way i don't actually do any play i just get points <laughs> uh yeah. it's not quite true this is so, we get paid in points to cast. That's how we do it. That's how I'm leveling up my rifleman. <laughs> yep. So uh, for those that are watching, um, I just got some comments about uh, helping me out with the two map. I had to do a complete computer pull apart the other day. That's why I've sort of lost a lot of settings and stuff. So uh, didn't get time to get back around to it. Uh, having a look at the rest of the team here, of course, we swip down to the bottom here and have a look at some of these Savage 5 Uh So Blue, a very good match. Uh, a good dominant first phase from Chimera. Followed by uh, what I would say was a very good um, stalemate there for a good 10 minutes with both teams pushing and pulling backwards and forwards. We'll go across to the warm-up screen here now uh, and get, get that happening. So, uh, put toing and froing there around the Bunnings area. But then Chimera did what they always do well, which is send around that, that flanking squad leader. Uh, he went miles out. They had, they had time. They had yeah. patience. It took ten, five or 10 minutes to get around there. When he got around there, just lazily threw down a um, an outpost. Suddenly, his squad spawns in. Suddenly, there's more squad leaders that he can get in off of the garrison back there. And bam, you, your point's getting cracked open, and you're wondering what the hell is going on. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we oh, yeah. We, you know, we saw that. What are your thoughts on that overall match there, Blue? That was uh, that was super exciting. I loved it. It was so good i liked that the south american team had control of the north which meant chimera couldn't push out of um wn4 straight away they can't steamroll it they have to come through you and they had a good line but i think chimera just went even further south than they expected um and then that put pressure on them there and then they managed to get into that north building um and then take down that garrison which meant they had that north um section along that hedge line to just go into battery yeah absolutely just got some fancy footage around the back there playing um i think the the key points there for for me from a um chimera perspective was the use of the squad leaders they did that well the two tanks with infantry support that two tank thing is working well for a lot of teams uh two doesn't matter whether it's allied or access tanks it works very very well and um uh 
we're, we're seeing that play play out nicely. Um, for the Seb H5 at first, guys, uh, I think they waited too long to try and flank, or maybe they found it too tough at that time. Uh, but you've got to send a couple of squad leaders, a little mini pack, uh, and get get your spawns in. This this game is a lot about spawns and options for your team. It's about intelligence, but it's also being agile enough to switch from attack to defense. If you've got nowhere, or defense to attack, if you've got nowhere to spawn in on attack, then you can't attack. And if you're in defense in Hell Let Loose, I tend to find that you gradually get ground down because everybody's throwing rockets and bombs and artillery at you and eventually you will lose your garrisons on the defensive. That's how it works. There's a very few points in this game that um, allow you to defend and you just can't crack them open. Um, uh, if I name a couple, uh, let me have a think about it. Oh, anyway, you get the point. Um, there's, there's very few that you can defend all day. Uh, Utah doesn't have a lot of them. Um, that's that strip along the north of the map there was so fascinating to see this time and it was really a very uh interesting battle half the map didn't really get touched at all no they didn't touch that south bit at all but then again surprisingly all of the points were up the top yeah so i i haven't seen that before and it was really cool to see all right blue so what we said earlier this was the last match until 2023 uh for the um for this particular competition and we're going to, uh, I think we were going to get across and raid you, but you're not even playing yet. <laughs> you probably want to sort that out. If you Are you actually streaming? Are you going to head off and stream now? Is that your plan? Uh, I might uh, do that. Otherwise, let's have a look. I will find someone. We've got Sandy. Him. We can probably go and raid. Uh, we raided him last time, but we can raid him again. Um, can't see anybody else there that I, uh, I'll raid at the moment. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Blue, thank you for joining me again. Um, really good to see you uh, uh, in the comp streaming scene with us now, and I uh, look forward to many more matches with you, either joining you on your stream or joining you, having you join me on mine. Thank you very yeah, much for no attending. Worries. These are fantastic. I find them so much fun, so I'm excited for the next round of competitions. Mm, yeah, it's cool stuff. Um, for me, that's that's all for me from HCA. I, I've got a couple of other comps going on uh, that I might be streaming in uh there's like three other comps but timing is going to be a little bit interesting for some of them uh one hopefully matches a bit more oceanic timings because uh sunday mornings can be a bit challenging but uh i look forward to seeing you at my next stream uh by then i'll probably also have some new computer parts to try and fix the ones that are broken in this one uh <laughs> it's, been a, <laughs> it's been a nightmare a few weeks it really has <laughs> all right ladies and gents i'm your host that was blue Good to see you. Let's rare raid Soundy. Let's get that triggered up. Um, let's cancel that actually because I'm going to stop the stream here and we'll raid him in 30 minutes' time when the stream ends. No. <laughs> all right. See you all then, folks. Bye for now.